California, especially coastal California, is not as rich in accessible fossil sites as Florida or North Carolina. Nevertheless, some localities do exist, and we will show you a few of the most popular ones. Number one is the world-famous place known as Ernst Quarries, or Shark Tooth Hill. It's located near Bakersfield, and is an important locality representing marine shallow water environment during the Miocene period, 12 to 15 million years ago. The coloration of shark teeth from Bakersfield is breathtaking and is valued by collectors. The land is privately owned and public digging is currently allowed for a fee. We are yet to go there because of the long distance and concerns about valley fever, a lung disease caused by fungi. However, we did visit the Buena Vista Museum of Natural History that has an excellent collection of the fossils from the locality. There are a few other sites nearby, such as Ant Hill, for example, where people dig out the fossilized shark teeth. Number two is the stretch of shore between New Brighton Beach and Capitola. It is accessible mostly during low tide and is known for marine mollusks and whale bones embedded in the Purushima Formation of Pliocene. Mollusks are hard to extract without breaking and honestly aren't worth the effort. They can be found in huge boulders fallen from above. So do not get too close to the cliffs. The huge bones and teeth of marine mammals look like they have been cemented into the matrix and are untouchable by the local law. By the way, Checking laws and complying with specific regulations related to any locality is your responsibility. Vertebra fossils are definitely a big no-no, and to me, taking pictures or videos makes more sense than collecting anyway. Number three is Carmel Valley, located south of Monterey. It's full of crab imprints, found in petroleum-rich shale. There are multiple road cuts, and some of them produce the crab imprints with intricate details and often colored in dark yellow or rusty orange hues due to the presence of iron oxides seeping into tiny, empty spaces in matrix created by carapaces. Even though it is often interpreted as the result of periodic mass mortality, I'm convinced that those were actually exoskeletons after molting similar to the remnants of trilobites. Crabs are small, hence the common name pea crab. They are thought to live between the mantle and the shell of bivalve mollusks. Multiple dots are common, but they are not eggs or fish scales. They are shells of single-celled organisms called foraminifera. Their elongated aggregates were made by marine tube worms. Some layers of the sediment may contain imprints of bivalve mollusks, leaves, occasional fish, and in extremely rare cases, a shark tooth. Similar sediments are found along the coast from San Luis Obispo south and up to Point Reyes north. Number four is Scott's Valley, which used to be a great spot to hunt for shark teeth, but not anymore. The old site is not accessible, although there are reports suggesting that fossil hunters might find other spots in the neighborhood. I'm not going to comment on the legality of such excavations until the exact coordinates are revealed to the public. Scouting the local hills shows potential, and maybe, one day, a pay-to-dig place will be created in Scotts Valley, but the attitude of locals towards such explorations seems to be negative. There is a spot near Carbonera Creek with sand dollars, but warning signs were put up there as well. We took a few pictures from the other side of the road, and you can see the undisturbed fossils that are nicely exposed. I think it's better this way. Number five, Coalinga, and in particular, Jacalitos Creek, is a dry and hilly place which used to be under the sea too. Sand dollars called dendraster and clamshells are commonly found all around Koalinga. We have never been there, but regularly see specimens at various gem shows. Number six, 
Mount Diablo has an interesting geology where more recent layers of the Eocene period are found below the older ones formed during the Jurassic period. Mostly, marine mollusks and leaf imprints can be observed there, but at least 156 localities and 455 species were found over the years. The area is protected, by the way. The Black Hawk Ranch Fossil Quarry is well known to the scientists who found bones and teeth of rhinos, horses, camels, elephant-like gomphotheriums back in the 1930s. Number 7. North of Sacramento, between Roseville and Malakoff Digging State Historic Park, petrified wood that is hidden underground and periodically turns up in people's backyards, in seasonal creeks, or at the places where gold was mined during the gold rush. Outcrops of sedimentary rocks from the Chico Formation can be found between Rockland and Folsom Lake. Number 8 is Drake's Beach at Point Reyes National Seashore. Once, we found whale bones sticking out of the cliff. Well-preserved whale skeleton was recovered from the deposits exposed during low tide. There is even a megalodon tooth in the visitor center. To be fair, we can name multiple beaches along the central coast of California with similar paleontological or geological setting and fair chances to encounter a fossilized whale bone. Here are just a few of them. Año Nuevo, Fitzgerald Marine Reserve, Pescadero Beach, and Santa Cruz near Wharf House are the places where we noticed fossilized bones among the gravel. As you can see, there's plenty of evidence that California was under the ocean once upon a time, until it got uplifted due to the movements of the Earth's tectonic plates. But I wish fossils from earlier periods would be better represented like brachiopods, ammonites, crinoids, or trilobites. Let's hope for more discoveries to be made. Thanks for watching! Check the description of this video, which contains links to our videos about specific locations mentioned earlier. La Brea Tar Pits near Los Angeles and Marble Mountain Trilobites were not included, as they are more in the southern part of California. Also, there is not much information about isolated finds of dinosaurs and marine reptiles in the San Joaquin Valley. Please feel free to comment and let us know if we missed any particular prominent spot. Finally, I recommend attending annual gem shows in Turlock, San Jose, Roseville, and Mariposa, as well as talking to members of local rock clubs. Good luck!